In physics, complementarity is a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics, closely associated with the Copenhagen interpretation. It holds that objects have complementary properties which cannot be measured accurately at the same time. The more accurately one property is measured, the less accurately the complementary property is measured, according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Further, a full description of a particular type of phenomenon can only be achieved through measurements made in each of the various possible bases which are thus complementary. The complementarity principle was formulated by Niels Bohr, a leading founder of quantum mechanics. Examples of Complementary Properties However far the quantum physical phenomena transcend the scope of classical physical explanation, the account of all evidence must be expressed in classical terms. The argument is simply that by the word experiment we refer to a situation where we can tell others what we have done, and what we have learned, and that, therefore, the account of the experimental arrangements, and of the results of the observations must be expressed in unambiguous language with suitable application of the terminology of classical physics. This crucial point implies the impossibility of any sharp separation between the behavior of atomic objects and the interaction with the measuring instruments which serve to define the conditions under which the phenomena appear. Consequently, evidence obtained under different experimental conditions cannot be comprehended within a single picture, but must be regarded as complementary in the sense that only the totality of the phenomena exhausts the possible information about the objects. For example, the particle and wave aspects of physical objects are such complementary phenomena. Both concepts are borrowed from classical mechanics, where it is impossible to be a particle and wave, at the same time. Therefore it is impossible to measure the full properties of the wave and particle, at a particular moment. Moreover, Bohr implies that it is not possible to regard objects governed by quantum mechanics, as having intrinsic properties independent of determination with a measuring device. The type of measurement determines which property is shown. However the single and double slit experiment and other experiments show that some effects of wave and particle can be measured in one measurement. Nature A profound aspect of complementarity is that it not only applies to measurability or knowability of some property of a physical entity, but more importantly it applies to the limitations of that physical entity's very manifestation of the property in the physical world. All properties of physical entities exist only in pairs, which Bohr described as complementary or conjugate pairs, which are also 4EA transform pairs. Physical reality is determined and defined by manifestations of properties which are limited by trade-offs between these complementary pairs. For example, an electron can manifest a greater and greater accuracy of its position only in even trade for a complementary loss and accuracy of manifesting its momentum. This means that there is a limitation on the precision with which an electron can possess, i.e., manifest, position, since an infinitely precise position would dictate that its manifested momentum would be infinitely imprecise, or undefined, i.e., non-manifest or not possessed, which is not possible. The ultimate limitations in precision of property manifestations are quantified by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and Planck units. Complementarity and uncertainty dictate that all properties and actions in the physical world are therefore non-deterministic to some degree. Physicists F.A.M. Fischer and Basil Hiley have summarized the reasons for the introduction of the principle of complementarity in physics, as follows. In the traditional view, it is assumed that there exists a reality in space-time, and that this reality is a given thing, all of whose aspects can be viewed or articulated at any given moment. Bohr was the first to point out that quantum mechanics call this traditional outlook into question. To him the indivisibility of the quantum of action, which was his way of describing the uncertainty principle, implied that not all aspects of a system can be viewed simultaneously. By using one particular piece of apparatus only certain features could be made manifest at the expense of others, while with a different piece of apparatus another complementary aspect could be made manifest in such a way that the original set became non-manifest, that is, the original attributes were no longer well-defined. 
for Burr. This was an indication that the principle of complementarity, a principle that he had previously known to appear extensively in other intellectual disciplines but which did not appear in classical physics, should be adopted as a universal principle. The emergence of complementarity in a system occurs when one considers the circumstances under which one attempts to measure its properties, as Bo noted, the principle of complementarity implies the impossibility of any sharp separation between the behavior of atomic objects and the interaction with the measuring instruments that serve to define the conditions under which the phenomena appear. It is important to distinguish, as did Bohr in his original statements, the principle of complementarity from a statement of the uncertainty principle. For a technical discussion of contemporary issues surrounding complementarity in physics see, e.g., Bandiapadaye, 2000, from which parts of this discussion were drawn. Additional Considerations in his original lecture on the topic, Rohr pointed out that just as the finitude of the speed of light implies the impossibility of a sharp separation between space and time, relativity, the finitude of the quantum of action implies the impossibility of a sharp separation between the behavior of a system and its interaction with the measuring instruments, and leads to the well-known difficulties with the concept of state in quantum theory. The notion of complementarity is intended to symbolize this new situation in epistemology created by quantum theory. Some people consider it a philosophical adjunct to quantum mechanics, while others consider it to be a discovery that is as important as the formal aspects of quantum theory. Examples of the latter include Leon Rosenfeld, who claim that complementarity is not a philosophical superstructure invented by Bohr to be placed as a decoration on top of the quantal formalism, it is the bedrock of the quantal description. And John Wheeler, who opined that Bohr's principle of complementarity is the most revolutionary scientific concept of this century, and the heart of his 50-year search for the full significance of the quantum idea. Experiments The quintessential example of wave-particle complementarity in the laboratory is the double slit. The crux of the complementary behavior is the question, what information exists embedded in the constituents of the universe that can reveal the history of the signal particles as they pass through the double slit. If information exists, even if it is not measured by a conscious observer that reveals which slit each particle traversed, then each particle will exhibit no wave interference with the other slit. This is the particle-like behavior. But if no information exists about which slit so that no conscious observer, no matter how well equipped, will ever be able to determine which slit each particle traverses then the signal particles will interfere with themselves as if they traveled through both slits at the same time, as a wave. This is the wave-like behavior. These behaviors are complementary, according to the Englert-Greenberger duality relation, because when one behavior is observed the other is absent. Both behaviors can be observed at the same time, but each only as lesser manifestations of their full behavior as determined by the duality relation. This superposition of complementary behaviors exists whenever there is partial which slit information. While there is some contention to the duality relation, and thus complementarity itself, the contrary position is not accepted by mainstream physics. 3540 Various neutron interferometry experiments demonstrate the subtlety of the notions of duality and complementarity. By passing through the interferometer, the neutron appears to act as a wave. Yet upon passage, the neutron is subject to gravitation. As the neutron interferometer is rotated through Earth's gravitational field a phase change between the two arms of the interferometer can be observed, accompanied by a change in the constructive and destructive interference of the neutron waves on exit from the interferometer. Some interpretations claim that understanding the interference effect requires one to concede that a single neutron takes both paths through the interferometer at the same time, a single neutron would be in two places at once as it were. Since the two paths through a neutron interferometer can be as far as 5 cm to 15 cm apart, the effect is hardly microscopic. This is similar to traditional double slit and mirror interferometer experiments, where the slits, or mirrors, can be arbitrarily far apart. 
So, in interference and diffraction experiments, neutrons behave the same way as photons or electrons of corresponding wavelength. 211-213 History Niels Bohr apparently conceived of the principle of complementarity during a skiing vacation in Norway in February and March 1927, during which he received a letter from Werner Heisenberg regarding the latter's newly discovered, and not yet published, uncertainty principle. Upon returning from his vacation, by which time Heisenberg had already submitted his paper on the uncertainty principle for publication, he convinced Heisenberg that the uncertainty principle was a manifestation of the deeper concept of complementarity. Heisenberg duly appended a note to this effect to his paper on the uncertainty principle before its publication, stating, Rohr has brought to my attention that the uncertainty in our observation does not arise exclusively from the occurrence of discontinuities, but is tied directly to the demand that we ascribe equal validity to the quite different experiments which show up in the particulate theory on one hand and in the wave theory on the other hand. Bohr publicly introduced the principle of complementarity in a lecture he delivered on the 16th of September 1927 at the International Physics Congress held in Como, Italy, attended by most of the leading physicists of the era with the notable exceptions of Einstein, Schrödinger and Dirac. However, these three were in attendance one month later when Bohr again presented the principle at the 5th Solvay Congress in Brussels, Belgium. The lecture was published in the proceedings of both of these conferences, and was republished the following year in Nader with Senschaften, in German, and in Nature, in English. An article written by Bohr in 1949 titled Discussions with Einstein on Epistemological Problems in Atomic Physics is considered by many to be a definitive description of the notion of complementarity. DDA and Discontinuous Motion in Complementarity Dr. Shangao, page location 1785, has used the work of C. Adler and the equations of DDA, DEM, and quantum mechanics to explain aspects of the double slit experiment in quantum mechanics and complementarity. The non technical foundation of the idea is to resolve wave versus particle issues by looking at wave motion of electrons or photons, particles, through a discretizing lens using discontinuous motion ideas and equations to explain how motion can occur in blocks, with the blocks then defined as particles and slash or discrete time units. The analogous equation aspects are widely accepted as of Adler, 2002, IBID above reference locations, but generalizing them to be I location of particles in the slit experiment is still theoretical and speculative.